So here's another example of working with probability distributions. Sometimes a probability distribution is also called a probability model. So I've got it highlighted right here. They mean the same thing. Um, so here's our example. A couple plans to have children until they get a girl, but they agree that they will not have more than three children if all are boys. And we need to assume that the boys and the girls are equally likely. And we want to create a probability model for the number of children that they'll have. I'm going to scroll down and answer part A down here. <clears throat> I need to put together a probability model and I need to define my random variable x. You should always define your random variable. So I'm going to say that x is equal to the number of children. So now when I put my capital X right here, since I have this definition or this, uh, um, I, I've defined my variable, I don't have to write it again down here in my table. And then I also want to put the probability of each individual outcome. Well, here are the possible outcomes. They could have, we know they're going to have children, but we know they're not going to have any more than three children. So they're either going to have one child, or they're going to have two children, or they're going to have three children. And they're going to stop after three. <clears throat> now, finding the probability for each of these um, is a little bit more difficult than just thinking through it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make a tree diagram to help me find the probability, the probabilities of them having one child, two children, or th three children. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is make a branch for their first child. They're either going to have a girl or they're going to have a boy. And there's a 50-50 chance that they have either one. Well, if they have a girl, they're going to stop. And if they're going to have, they have that one girl, they stop right there. That means the probability of having one child is 0.5. Well, let's continue this because if they have a boy first, then they're going to try to have it. They're going to have a second child. <clears throat> and they're either going to have, let me put the girls here, stay consistent. So they're either going to have a girl or a boy. And once again, for this child, because each child is independent of the other, th this child would be 50% for the girl and 50% 50, 50 for the boy. Now, at this point, we can figure out what the probability is that they have two children. Because if they have a boy and then a girl, they're going to stop. So the probability of having two children is going to be 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25. <clears throat> and finally... The last branch would be if they are going to have a third child, that third child is either going to be a girl or a boy. And once again, because they are, each child is independent of the other, it's 50-50 for this particular branch. And we can look at two situations. We know if they have three children, they're either going to have a boy, a boy, and a girl, which would go down this branch. <clears throat> right here, either a boy, a boy, or a girl, or they're going to have three boys, which would be this branch, boy, boy, boy. So I need to combine the probabilities of both of these branches to get the probability for two for having three children. So that would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 to the third power is 0.125. What just so happens, that boy, boy, boy is also going to be 0.5 to the third power, which is 0.125. And when I add these two values together, because both of these branches will give me three children, I end up getting 0.25. So the probability that they have three children is 0.25. And this follows our, our properties of a probability distribution. For a probability distribution, each one of the individual probabilities has to be between 0 and 1. It could be 0 or 1, but that doesn't happen very often. <clears throat> and the other thing is, if I find the sum of all of the probabilities, it should add up to 1. So 0 0.5, times, or 0 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 is equal to 1. So my probability distribution is in good shape. 
and, and <clears throat> now I've answered part A. It says create a probability model, which is the same as a probability distribution for the number of children they will have. That's what this is right, whoops, I didn't mean to move all that around. That's what this is right here. That is your probability model. Now in part B, it says find the expected value or the expected number of children as well as the standard deviation for the number of children. So I'm looking at this probability distribution and there's two uh, things that I need to find, the expected value and the standard deviation. So let's start off with B, the expected value. The notation looks like this, the expected value of x or the expected value for the number of children they will have. And my formula says <clears throat> to find the sum of each random variable times its corresponding probability and then uh, and find, find the product of each random variable times its corresponding probability and add them all together. So I'll do a little bit of math up here. 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. So down here I'm finding x times the probability of x. So multiplication there, x times the probability of x. This would be 0.5. 2 times 0.25 is going to give me 0.5 as well. And 3 times 0.25 is going to give me 0.75. Now I need to find the sum of all of those. So in this case, the expected value for x, which is the number of children, is 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.75. And 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.75 gives me 1.75. I just used the calculator to figure that out. I'm not sure why I needed the calculator to add 1 plus 0.75, but there we go. So my expected number of children for them is 1.75. Now remember, expected value is a mean, and it's okay for an average or a mean to be a decimal. We know that we can't have 0.75 of a child, but we're talking about on average, that's what, this, that's what the average number of children would be if we were looking at this uh, probability distribution, okay? <clears throat> now the second thing of, that we needed to find for part B is the standard deviation. And the standard deviation that we want to or the formula for the standard deviation for, find, for a probability distribution is the sum of, <clears throat> well, let me go ahead and find it here. Here we go. This is what I wanted to find. The standard deviation of x, my random variable, is equal to the square root of the variance of x, and the variance of x is equal to the sum of x minus mu, which is my population mean, squared times the probability of each random, its corresponding probability. So there we go. Now, I'm not going to expect my students to figure this out by hand every single time. We could do this by hand, um, and it, this one wouldn't be too bad because we've got only three outcomes for our random variable. But I'm going to go ahead and jump to my calculator, and I want to show you how to find the standard deviation and mean of a probability distribution using using our calculator. So let me go ahead and hit stat edit to go to my lists and I've got a bunch of things in my list so I want to get rid of that. I'm going to hit second memory which is the plus sign and then if I go to number four I can clear all of my lists at the same time and now when I go back my lists are empty. So let's go ahead and put these, uh, put this probability distribution into my list. In list number one, I want to put the outcomes for the random variable. So that would be one, two, and three. In list number two, I want to put the probabilities for my random variable, the corresponding probabilities. So that's 0 0.5, and then 0 0.25, and then 0 0.25 again. <laughs> So there is my probability distribution. Now the nice thing about the calculator is 
if you go back to your home screen, you can hit stat and then go to calculate and use one var stats, one variable statistics. Now you've probably used this for just one list of data, but when you use it for two lists of data, the calculator recognizes that the first list that you give it are the outcomes for a, for a discrete random variable, and the second list is the probability for each of those outcomes. So when I go one var stats for L1 comma L2 and hit enter, I get this. And right here I can see that the mean of my distribution or the expected value is 1.75. We saw that, we figured that out by hand, but we also see down here sigma, okay, which is our standard deviation of our, our probability model or probability distribution. Okay, so scroll down, make this a little bit larger. These two things right here give us the mean of my probability distribution and the standard deviation of my probability distribution. Okay. Well, now let's go to part C. Part C extends this and says, find the expected number of boys that they will have. So that changes things. In fact, when it says find the expected number of boys that they will have, that means that I have a new probability distribution. <clears throat> So I'm going to make a brand new probability distribution and they are either going to have, well, let me, let me write this in first. Here we go. Part C. And there's still going to be three outcomes. X is now the number of boys that they have. So if they go down this first branch, they will have, if they have a girl first, that means they will have zero boys. If they have a boy first and then a girl, that means that they will have one boy. If they have one boy and then another boy and then a girl, that means that they will have two boys. And then finally, they could have all three boys. So these are the possible outcomes for having, for the number of boys that they will have. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and skip over a little bit of math and just put the numbers right into this probability distribution. The probability for each one of these happening, if I use my, if I use my uh, table up here, I'll be able to find these different probabilities. I've actually already found them. So the probability that they have no boys and one girl, because they had a girl first, is 0.5. The probability that they have one boy, which means a boy and then a girl, would be 0.25. The probability that they have two boys, which means boy, boy, and then girl, if you remember, that's 1.125, and that's the same probability for having three boys. Remember, in the last distribution, we added these two values up to figure out the number of children that they would have. So there is our probability distribution for the number of boys they will have. Well, to get the expected value, I could multiply each one of these, find x times its corresponding probability, and then multiply, 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 and then add everything together. Or once again, I think in this case, I'm just going to jump to the calculator, and I'm going to put it into my list again. So in this case, these values over here are going to change. They either have zero boys, one boy, two boys, or three boys. And my probabilities, the probability that they have one boy is 0.5. The probability they have one boy, or zero boys is 0.5. One boy is 0.25. And then the probability for either two boys or three boys, each are going to be 0.125. Now I can go stat, calculate, number one. List number one is my random variable, and list number two are my probabilities for each random, each outcome, and this will give me my new expected value. So we could say they can expect to have 0.875 
boys. And once again, expected value is a mean, so that's why it's okay to have a decimal as that value. So hopefully this will help you work through finding the mean and standard deviation for a probability distribution.